This video is brought to you by Sprite Tropical Mix. Because just like this video, we all up in the Kool-Aid and don't know the flavor. I just love this shit because everything's a lie. Don't believe anything you see. Everything's Everything is companies manipulating us, and us and marketing to us. It's all crazy. It's all lies. You know, Isn't it crazy? Is nuts. This is like a jaw-dropping moment, for sure. It's crazy. <laughs> Hello, hi, hello, how are you doing? Welcome back. How are you? Are we doing okay? Great. It's me, it's Malcolm, and today. Today we are talking about somebody I haven't talked about in a long time. And when I mean long time, I really mean long time. Shane Dawson is someone I haven't covered on my channel in a while. How long has it been? Well, looking back at all my videos last time, I talked about Shane Dawson when he came back to YouTube all the way back in 2021. And this was after he got canceled and this is his comeback after that cancellation. Since then, Shane Dawson has gotten married, acquired houses in both California and Colorado, and he and Rylan are in the process of having a baby via surrogate. But that's not why we're here today. So Shane has recently uploaded a video titled Conspiracy Theories with Shane Dawson 2023 and is currently sitting at number seven trending with just over 950,000 views at the time of re-recording. Keep in mind that this video actually did end up on the trending page because this will be important later. Conspiracy theories are defined as, according to the Merriam-Webster dictionary, as a theory that explains an event or set of circumstances as a result of a secret plot by usually powerful conspirators. Second definition being, also, a theory asserting that a secret of great importance is being kept from the great public. Just keep those definitions in mind as we talk about this conspiracy video or whatever you want to call it. So I want to break this video down into two parts. I promise it won't be as long as my, uh, my Trisha video, my Jacqueline video. I don't think it's gonna be that long to be honest with you. You'll see why in a second. Um, I just wanna break this video down into two parts. Part one is mostly gonna be me summarizing Shane Dawson's video, but also taking a look at these conspiracy theories to see you know, if they're actually theories or just things people really didn't think about or know. Part two of this video is Shane Dawson's reaction to the initial views that he received and how apparently he wasn't satisfied with that even though his video ended up on trending anyway. I think there is a discussion to be had about Shane Dawson's privilege in this case. At the end of the day, I do feel like it greatly shows in this video. Lastly, for all the Shane Dawson stands that defend this guy so deeply, this message is for you. This video is titled, Shane Dawson's conspiracy video is out of touch, meaning that I will be mostly criticizing Shane Dawson's video. So if you just still decide to stay, if you just still decide to stay and watch this whole video and still leave a comment such as you're obsessed or you're mad, stay mad, or my absolute favorite, oh, you're just a fan. I'll just have a good laugh, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm just gonna have a perfectly good laugh to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I just think it's weird, especially if you have never interacted with my channel especially. Um, like, these types of fans go out their way to find videos and leave comments like this. To me, it seems like you guys are the ones that are a bit obsessive. Um, so if you decide to stay, welcome. Please keep your hands and feet inside of the ride at all times. Um, for those that roll out, I wish you well. Um, so, without further ado, let's jump into it. Welcome to part one where we're gonna be talking about Shane's video. And thankfully, parts are labeled in a way, so I will just mention that. Uh, and when in reference to Shane's video, so if you do, do decide to watch it on your own and follow along with me, um, you'll be able to quickly see what I'm referencing. Also, the imagery I'm gonna give you should be enough, but I have some clips here and there, not that many. Again, you're gonna understand why. So like the first actual section of this conspiracy video is titled The Catalyst and Shane references this Amazon package 
and like all will be revealed depending on what's inside. So after the suspense, he then reveals animal cracker cookies. Yeah. Sit down. Oh. Chris. Yeah. I want to show you something. Okay. okay. But before I show you, how would you like a cookie? I I love cookies. Well, perfect, because I have some. I'm so scared. Why are you saying it like that? So these are so good. They're from Trader Joe's. Hey y'all, just got back to Trader Joe's and want to share with you some of our favorite snacks. You know Trader Joe's, right? I love Trader I love everything from Trader Joe's. I know, me too. Everything is like kind of healthy and kind of like, you know, exclusive and like, I don't know, I just love all of their products. Today's YouTube video is a Trader Joe's cookie haul. And we will be taste testing Trader Joe's cookies. Now, for my sweet tooth people. So I know this is probably so basic. These animal crackers. Well, I love these animal cookies, especially because they're organic. I know everyone says organic. I don't know what makes them organic. Don't you feel good feeding these to your kids? Yeah, when something says organic, I definitely feel like I'm healthier somehow. My kids like these better than regular animal crackers. You had five cookies, no more. <laughs> Everything about this packaging, I just feel better about giving these to my kids. Yeah. And in terms of sugar, for six, Hopefully that was on camera. For 16 of them. Oh. Uh, there's some Here, take one. Okay. Yeah, feel free. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Mm. Yeah, they're so good. Yeah. So like the previous part before this where Shane was showing news clips and they were talking about trusting food and stuff, I was definitely expecting something different. This is followed by clips of people who absolutely love these specific animal crackers from Trader Joe's. Then Shane opens up the second package and it's animal crackers once again, but this time it's Stouffer's Animal Crackers, along with these clips of other videos saying that, you know, they taste the exact same. No. no. <laughs> Why am I so scared? What if I told you that those organic Trader Joe cookies are literally the exact same thing as these? What do you mean? Like, they're almost the same, or? No, they are the same. First product is the organic animal crackers. Now these look exactly like Stouffer's, like from your childhood. Tasty. Tastes exactly the same. Mm -hmm. They are literally the same cookie made by the same manufacturer and packaged in two different ways. Well, like I heard that these are like better than regular animal crackers, so I figured I'd try them. Confused. I feel like there has to be a difference. What do you mean really? when you say the same? Are you saying like identical? Tell everybody. And right here, you're kind of like, okay, we're talking about food. We pulled out products that are kind of the same and apparently they taste the same. Literally, that is the entire video. <laughs> there is more, I promise you, that I'm gonna talk about. But for the rest of the video, I for 59 minutes, it's, oh, these two products are the same and they taste the same. That's it. I just saved you 59 minutes of watching, but I still have some more notes. Um, just wanted to point that out there. Um, so around seven minutes, Shane finally gets into whether where this theory starts. I want to preface this, this by saying I am very aware about this off-brand grocery food stuff. And even though this video is mostly based around food, Shane does mention that it's just not food. It's like clothing, beauty products, skincare. And honestly, I think Shane missed a great chance to talk about all of these categories because it there just seems like a lack of the talking about the power of advertising and maybe why more people are inclined to buy these name brands. It's so like, how is that possible? How is that legal? I don't understand. Like you go to Trader Joe's, like these are all bougie exclusive items that are like slightly healthier. This is the biggest Trader Joe's I've ever been in. These are fire. No, it's the same shit you get at Walmart. And it's not just Trader Joe's that does this. It is 
everyone. And it's not just food. It's clothes, it's beauty products, it's skincare, cars, maybe not cars. <laughs> <laughs> but it's every single product and company and everything. It's crazy. Let's go to the kitchen. So the next section we arrive at is called the rabbit hole. And essentially this part is just about how Shane got these wonderful branded pistachios and how they were the exact same as Trader Joe's. This information is coming along because of the recent recall between the wonderful pistachios um, from both establishments. This then leads to Shane talking about the private labeling and how like Walmart is the most known for it. And I just, just want to be like, okay, we're, we're, we're going to stick with the food thing. I get it. But it feels like this private labeling stuff is nothing new, right? Like I'm, I'm literally sitting watching the video and I'm just kind of sitting and looking and I'm like, okay, tell us something we don't know because um, I don't know about y'all, but my friend groups, my friends and me, we're all very aware of store brand and off brand being the same thing. I thought that was just kind of like everybody accepted that. You can even ask your parents about off brand stuff and they're going to be like, yeah, um, didn't everybody know that? I guess some people really didn't know, judging by the reactions, um, but it feels like it's like common knowledge that this is going on. Even in the video, it just didn't seem like Shane really went that hard on the companies trying to save like um, a buck or two or trying to profit off of something. Um, they mention it here and there, but I was really expecting them to really go into depth about that and like who's in charge of it all, like that kind of stuff. Cause that kind of stuff, that would be interesting. That would be cool. But like I said, for literally the whole 59 minutes, just like, oh my God, these two brands are the same and I, they taste the same because um, later in the video, they have like a taste test or whatever. And it's pretty much, they could have done this video in like 20 minutes. Just gonna keep it real with you. <laughs> this video could have been done in 20 minutes, but um, anyway. So after all this, uh, Shane goes to the kitchen to show off this matte black cup, uh, only to pull out the same type of cup from Five Below, except it doesn't have the Starbucks logo on it. I don't know what it is, but this doesn't feel like a conspiracy theory per se, but more so just something people didn't know slash paid attention to. And that's not trying to say, you know, people have a silver spoon in their mouth, so like they're not accustomed to off-brand things, but this is just like something that I feel like is so common knowledge that it's just like, you don't think about it and you don't ask because this is kind of like, like the advertisement and like the companies have already gotten to you. That's why when I was a kid, um, that's why I never went to off brand things because I always got made fun of for it. <laughs> so I was so ashamed to get anything off brand, but now as an adult realizing that, you know, it really was the same. Um, I just kind of feel silly. If there's any message that can be taken from this. It's like, Hey, uh, if you're struggling and you really want something, then just go with the off-brand stuff. You're going to save a bunch of money. Um, again, I really didn't feel like that message was pushed here when it could have been, uh, but I digress. So at uh, this point in the video, Shane talks about his, uh, the biggest culprit, and he says that he plans to go to the Aldi store. Um, a quick aside, by the way, uh, I kept seeing comments about Chris, the uh, videographer, and how he's always shaking the camera and it's never still. Uh, no joke, for like a minute straight, he's like swaying the camera back and forth. And I will say it is a bit much. Um, so they end up going to a Taco Bell, whatever. And there's like a small joke about Shane never getting a sponsor again, which I don't think that's true. I'm sure one day he will get another sponsor. Um, but just the whole, oh my God, what was me? I'm never getting another sponsor joke feels kind of played out uh the whole i'm canceled joke the whole i was almost on a lawsuit joke i don't know it just feels like when you say it over and over again it does get kind of corny so then we get to the part where i feel like i could relate if if i was going to relate to anything this is probably going to be the only part i relate to the 
section is called the childhood lie and um it's pretty much riley and cheney talking about how one side uh name brands were the way to go and the other side being pretty much told to immediately go towards the off-brand stuff which again my parents kind of did that to me too i just want to say again that um it really didn't bother people in the area that much however i will say to me it felt like the off-brand stuff got stale a bit faster than the name brands i'm not sure if other people have had that experience but that was definitely mine so we finally get into the oldie store and surprising no one you can literally see the name brands next to all the knockoff products in the grocery store but it definitely feels a bit over dramatic um which is honestly just kind of shane dawson's mo so it's not that surprising okay let's go to the cereal aisle we have to be like low-key <laughs> Look at the fucking cookies. Chips Ahoy, and then right next door, Bessons. Chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> Whoa! Those are the same fucking packaging and everything. But, oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god. Doritos? Yeah. Right next to Clancy's Nacho Cheese. No. I know my fucking Doritos. You're telling me those aren't Doritos? They look just like Doritos. Yeah, those are Doritos. Clancy's and Cheetos. I don't know. Do these look different enough? Look at the pop tarts. Toaster tarts. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. No way. Do you think they're the same? Do they have like a strawberry comparison? Yes. Oh yeah, no that's it. Way. Oh my god, it's made by Millville. You're fucking no kidding way. me. So that means it's probably the same? I mean, they look the same in the box though. Which one's different? You can't even tell. That's how close they look. Today we're gonna do a taste test between General Mills and the Millville. I'm curious to see what's actually inside because the picture makes them look uh, like questionably different. I took a still shot of the um, way they look. Not much difference. Look at all the fucking Millville cereals. This is crazy. All these cereals over here I did get from Target and these cereals over here I did get from Aldi. The Frosted Flakes. Whoa. Wait, Frosted Flakes? Isn't that the name? <laughs> Did they just steal the, the actual Wait. name? Yes. And look at cookies. There's no way that's different. There's no difference. Both cereals taste the same. Oh my god, fruit rounds? <laughs> no way. Well, marshmallows and stars. This I okay, why is this scary to me? Do you know what I mean? I feel like I'm in a movie where I'm like in an alternate universe where everything's off. Yes. Like it's like a multiverse. So <gasps> sad. Here's our girls. Oh. So I'm spending extra money to buy the brand name when I could just spend less money and buy the generic brand. You know what would really get... save people some money? What? Is if we did the research on paper towels and toilet papers. Who makes the good stuff? Like, what's the bounty Ooh. knockoff? Oh, I got a fucking hot ass tip for all you diaper wearers out there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> If you go to Costco, their Kirkland diapers are just last season's Huggies. <gasps> they're the ones that didn't sell, like they're... Okay, let's go. They don't bag it up for you, you just have to like take it out. Could they not get some uh, fake ass Walmart bag? <laughs> We're gonna get so wet. Oh, oh my god, catch up! Oh. Uh, the next story they talk about is Walmart, and the goal here is to find white bread because of another recall involving Sarah Lee bread. So they get the bread and they also get ice cream because if the theme hasn't hit you in the head yet, Food dupes are a thing. In case that hasn't sunk in yet. Now that uh, Shane has visited all these different grocery stores, he has Ryland drive to this sketchy motel where they put all the food on the bed and have the name brands next to the duplicates. And then Shane then says he wants to order food from three different places. Chicken Sammy's, Fresh Set, and Red Robin. If the theme hasn't hit you over the head yet, it's going to 
I'm, I'm about to say, if it hasn't hit you on the head yet, uh, you probably weren't paying attention to the video that Shane put out. The 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 motif is the same. <laughs> so if he's ordering food, I'm pretty sure you can guess where that's gonna go later. Anyway, we finally get to the part where they taste test all this food they brought from the store just to see if it's really the same. Surprise! It's the same. The thing we already knew by this point. Okay, so after like 48 minutes in this 59 minute video, we get to the final theory, thank God, of the video. And this is in relation to the food they ordered a bit earlier. Shane pulls out the food and... It's time for our final theory. Are you guys hungry after all that? I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank God, me too. Okay, I'm gonna grab our dinner. You're so weird. <laughs> What? I'm just grabbing our meals. Is Shane gonna kill us? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, this is yours from um, Red Robin. From Red Robin. Yay, thank you. And uh, Ryan, this is yours from Chicken Soup. Okay. And then this is mine from um, Fresh Set, because I'm healthy. Okay. Can I open? Yeah, let's dig in. Why am I scared? Okay, there's Chris's. Okay. Uh, okay. Mine. Is there two? <laughs> Wait. What's wrong, Chris? <laughs> Wait. Let me get the drinks. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Wait, why is every everything's... Okay. Wait. <laughs> There's the Coke. Are these the same? This oh. is so fucked up. This is so fucked this up. This is so fucked up. Here's our drinks. Pull out your receipts. Are you sure this is all three different places? Wait. So, it's not just grocery stores. I'm gonna kill this. myself. <laughs> it's restaurants. So the new thing that's happening right now that I got suckered into is a restaurant chain like Red Robin. They'll go on the Postmates app and they'll create fake restaurants that look like local little cute hangouts and then so that you'll see it on Postmates and be like, oh, I haven't tried Chicken Sammy's. Let me try that. And you order from it and it comes. This is so fucked up on <laughs> such a deep level. Like this is actually... Like, for these kinds of food things, I'm like, whatever, it's like the restaurant's trying to make the most out of their money. And they are trying to make the most out of their money, but I feel like it's more deceiving. Oh, it's literally, it should be illegal. Following the entire theme of the video, it's the same. Do you get it? The companies are lying to you, allegedly. Do you get it? Do you get it? No, let me order a bunch of more food just to say the same thing over and over. Do you get it? Okay then. I will say in terms of conspiracies, this is definitely something that you would feel fits into the category. Even though a quick lookup, if you pay attention to the addresses, can be easily proven. Um, I will say the editing definitely benefits this part alone. And then, and then, and then, the grand finale of this video is something I heard about before even watching the video. So Shane brings out this pizza box with the name Pasquale's. And Shane talks about how it's new, um, it's very bougie and all this stuff, right? Of course, we can already tell where this is going by now. Pasquale's is not Pasquale's. It's Chuck E. Cheese. There were a few jokes about the Chuck E. Cheese and the lawsuit that Shane almost had to deal with a few years ago. And just kind of the guys being over dramatic and shocked that this is a thing. And that, no joke, is pretty much the entire video. Um, besides the exaggeration in the editing and such, I feel like this video could have been a lot shorter. But again, this fits with the same kind of energy as Shane's older videos. I asked this in a way that I feel like everyone would understand. Where 
was the conspiracy theory part of this video. This kind of stuff has been around for a while and fortunately something that's not being held from the public. And like Shane Dawson has been in the position for a while where he hasn't had to think about buying knockoffs and for him to say things like he's unsure of what to film and after four months on his main channel, we'll get to that, four months on his main channel to just come out with a video on food dupes seems kind of meh to me. Like besides one thing, I feel like the whole video was really trying to amp up this, wow, look at all these companies being shady. When in reality, judging from the comments away from the moderated comment section of Shane's YouTube section, it was kind of common knowledge that, you know, store brand and like name brand were kind of the same thing. Like all of our parents telling us the store brand was the same and this is a conspiracy. I'm, I'm just a bit confused. And that leads us to the end of part one where we just kind of went over Shane's video. And honestly, in my opinion, it just felt like there would be more conspiracies. To spend 59 minutes to say the same thing over and over just comes off as repetitive and uninformative after a while because you know the twist before it happens. If one's a Shane Dawson fan, then absolutely this video is gonna be for you, especially after waiting months for him to post again on his main channel. But does it end here? Oh no, my friends, because Shane then uploaded another video, this time on his second channel, titled, Okay, Let's Talk. And just to save you 20 my, 29 minutes if you don't you know, feel like watching, it's basically a vlog style video and talks about more food that's the same with the main focus being Girl Scout cookies. I mean, you can watch it if you want, but there's nothing to really comment or criticize on since it just seems like more extra footage from the first video that they couldn't put anywhere. Now that we're at the end of part one, I really want to get into the next part because Shane Dawson went on Instagram stories about his video and what seemingly happened after is kind of my main point with this video today. Okay, I've never looked directly at the lens, but I feel like since I really don't have a script, I feel like it will be more personal in this section for me to just really look at the camera to try to kind of get any points I need to across. Um, so this is part two of my Shane video where I'm really gonna talk about like this unrelatableness that Shane Dawson has developed over time. And I don't really don't have that much time to really go over everything, but I think with this Instagram story post that I'm going to tell you about in a second, I really feel like the relatable Shane Dawson that everyone knows and loves kind of showed a little bit of who he is with this one post. Um, because you could definitely tell that uh, he was not happy with the views. Again, he ended up on the trending page after this. We'll get to that. But I just wanted to read the Instagram post um, from a couple days ago that he posted about the YouTube algorithm, which so many people, myself included, have had issues with. <laughs> so... Let me just read what Shane Dawson had to say and then see what happened afterwards. And then you tell me if Shane Dawson is on the same level as the smaller creators. So, so I'm gonna pop it up here and Shane Dawson's Instagram story says as follows. I'm gonna be honest. My new video isn't really getting much love from the YouTube algorithm. I know this is so lame to ask, but if you enjoy the video, please share it with your friends. I haven't asked for that in probably 10 years, but I'm really proud of this video, so I might as well ask. To those of you who have watched it and shown it love, thank you. It really means the world to me. So, <laughs> so Shane Dawson says the YouTube algorithm is not showing him much love, right? Quick, quick quiz for the class. On Shane Dawson's main channel, don't look now, I want you to guess, 
How many times has Shane Dawson uploaded in the past year? Don't worry, I will wait. Don't look it up. I really want you to guess. Did you get it? Okay. If you look here, Shane Dawson has posted seven times in the past year. Seven. If somebody's trying to be like, what's a big deal about that? He's still a big YouTuber. Let me explain to you, my good friend. With the YouTube algorithm, it goes as such. And this is the, like, like the bare bones, what really makes sense. If you don't upload, YouTube will punish you. Do I think that's fair? Oh, absolutely not. However, it's something that every creator has dealt with. When I haven't uploaded for as long as I haven't been uploading, people have been getting unsubscribed from my channel. It has been known that YouTube does that. Is there a way to fix it? Obviously not, it's been years since they've been doing that, so I really know how to fix that. If you're not uploading consistently, unfortunately YouTube does punish you for that. Again, do I think that's fair? No, but check this out, check this out. So after Shane Dawson goes and says, you know, hey, my video's not doing well, what do you think happened, guys? Remember, Shane Dawson came back after this whole cancellation and like his first video back trended number one in 2021. Remember that. So what do you think happened after Shane Dawson talked about the YouTube algorithm? What do you think happened? I'm pretty sure you can guess. I've already said it multiple times. Yes, he actually ended up on the trending page for YouTube. The same algorithm that we all know, if you haven't known, you're gonna figure out really quickly, YouTube handpicks their trending page videos. Is it really that much of a coincidence Shane Dawson said something about the YouTube algorithm not loving his video and then magically his video becomes trending on YouTube? Quickly now. All right, I thought it was just me, I thought it was tripping. Uh, <laughs> so this is what I mean by the out of touch part, right? Again, this video feels like common knowledge for lower to lower middle class to lower class people, which is a lot of us, right? So them making all these jokes about, you know, the food being different from the name brands. And I will say it's weird that they kept talking about like, are we gonna die in like, every five to 10 minutes, thought that was weird. I will say, I will say this, I will say this. Ryland Adams, well, is it Ryland Dawson now? Um, Ryland, uh, he doesn't hide that he loves the luxurious stuff. He doesn't hide that he is all about the bougie So I can't really knock Ryland for that. But when you talk about Shane and he's talking about some, you know, oh my God, like I don't deserve this kind of stuff. Thank God he did not make those kind of jokes in this video. Um, I feel like he finally got the message that that was kind of cringy. But you can definitely tell between Shane and Ryland's demeanors that um, one was like, kind of like, oh my God, this is so amazing. Um, talking about Ryland here because he probably has never seen an off-brand thing in his life. <laughs> and then you have Shane Dawson that's really like hyping this up, like, oh my God, Doritos are different. And I'm just kind of like, this isn't a theory, my guy, oh my God. Like, if you really wanna, if you really, really wanna think about it, like what was the OG pizza place that people used to go to? Um, and for me, I would say Pizza Hut, right? <laughs> then you have all these places that kind of, in the area that copy Pizza Hut's kind of recipe. Um, to the point where you can go to another place and the pizzas really don't taste any different. I know that, you know, I've had school lunch pizza and then I go to like a chain restaurant or whatever and I eat pizza from there and it's kind of the same because at the end of the day, what can you really do that's so different but also like, you know, be what it is. Like for instance, pizza. Pizza is different everywhere, right? 
Um, who's to say that, you know, the off-brand stuff didn't start with the big restaurants, you know? And I'm kind of like, again, I brought it up earlier. I really wish if he was, Shane was gonna do this whole conspiracy theory of uh, off-brand just copies the big brand and just takes a logo off it. I kind of wish that you didn't just stick with food. I think that's kind of what turned people off a lot was you, again, talked about the same thing over and over. I think makeup would have been a great route to take as well, along with um, clothing, because this is something that um, I don't think a lot of people have caught on to yet. I used to watch chain videos immensely, right? I remember a conspiracy theory where Shane Dawson brought clothing from Kohl's and then he brought the stuff from the regular site. And then of course they were the same. It's just maybe the logo was a little bit smaller, but they were the same thing. It was both champion apparel and all that stuff, right? So it's not, so this whole you know, company, like lower end companies or whatever, lower end companies or whatever, uh, making something more affordable and then you get it for the higher end on a different site. He's done this kind of already with clothing. So I don't know why he's making it seem like he's never done something like this before when in reality, he kind of has. And I think in the end, that's really where you can see Shane Dawson's privilege like really show because he's acting so surprised that um, food companies and grocery companies would cut corners to copy things and make them, you know, cheaper. And maybe you'll buy their product instead of the name brand products. Like I'm surprised that this was a video as long as it was because 59 minutes, <laughs> 59 minutes of just saying the same thing over and over again. And I don't know if the Chuck E. Cheese thing was supposed to be like super su surprising, but then when you really think about it for two seconds, Pasquale being one of the Chuck E. Cheese mascots. And this is what I mean by, you know, th there was not really much else to talk about in the video because it was just the same thing over and over again. That's what I mean. It's just kind of like, you knew the twist was coming. Anytime there was a different food being brought into the camera, you kind of knew where it was going. It was just like, oh, well, this food is actually this food. And, and I was just kind of like, okay, we get it. Um, I definitely wish if, if you're really gonna like go with it, talk about like, you know, which major companies are really doing this. He, um, he brought up General Mills a lot cause you know, that's a cereal, mostly cereal. But like really talk about, you know, the main big four players and then see, like really look into it and be like, you know, are they under the same brand? And then that one brand just branched out into like these four sub brands and then these four sub brands branch out to everywhere else. And this is where the uh, duplication is coming out. Didn't really get into much of that cause I would have, you know, if anything, I would have preferred to see that. Um, but it definitely felt like a vlog style video with just a little bit of um, like high editing and like a little bit of like scary music. I will say, and this is kind of me just reflecting now, the more I think about it, I do think Shane Dawson is a uh, victim of his own creation slash success, if you want to call it. Um, because the number one thing whenever I see Shane talking about, you know, what should I do next? It's always, you know, do the conspiracy videos, do the conspiracy videos, do the conspiracy videos, right? So Shane still does consistent conspiracy content on his second channel with the podcast with his brother. And I think Rylan's on there too. Um, so as you can see here, it's like three pages worth from all the way following from last year just like um, one or two videos a month about uh, conspiracy theories. Uh, it's just not in the form that the main channel does it. And what I mean by Shane being a victim of his own success is it's kind of what he's known for now. And bef this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Let me explain. So I can only think of 
let's go with Daniel Radcliffe. And if you know Daniel Radcliffe, uh, played Harry Potter in all eight movies and all that good stuff, right? So when Daniel Radcliffe started to go to other movies, it was hard for people to accept him as someone that wasn't Harry Potter, right? I think about the Shane Dawson uh, fans that kind of, you know, said, you know, we want the conspiracy videos, we want the conspiracy videos. And to me, it's just like, we can't see you doing anything else because you're the conspiracy guy. Looking at the effort he put in the video, it's not like, I don't think Shane hates doing conspiracy videos all the time, but I think he really wants to do other things, but he can't do other things unless his audience wants him to do other things. Like it's really hard for any YouTube content creator, any content creator to change lanes, um, especially if the audience isn't following along for the ride. And I think that in the end really can mess you up as a content creator because it's just kind of like, you're kind of scared to do anything else because if you do something else, you're already gonna upset the audience that you already have when trying to build a bigger audience uh, from different, you know, genres on, you know, the platform. And if you're stuck doing one thing, like you're gonna be kind of in this cycle where if you don't do it, then your regulars are gonna unsubscribe. The new people are gonna be like, I'm not interested. So you're not really gaining anything at that point. This, de this video was definitely more for the fans. You can definitely tell. Um, I usually look up comments and stuff to see people's feedback, but I pretty much think I nailed, nailed it from the uh, criticism side where it's kind of like, dude, we kind of already seen all this. We already know all this since we've been kids. Uh, this is nothing new. And then you have the other sides that are just like, you know, we don't care what you upload. We're just glad you're here. So that's why I said again earlier that, you know, this is the perfect video for a Shane fan because it's just like, it gives you everything you want. It gives you the dramatics. It gives you the great editing. The, cam the camera work, uh, Chris, I don't know him that well. I haven't seen any of his work outside of Shane's channel, but I will say, please ho just hold the camera. <laughs> I, like I said, I think I showed the clip earlier where um, like he was just like shaking the camera a lot. I think he was laughing or something at that point. And um, it did kind of make me a little bit woozy, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, I, um, I am a little bit elevated right now, so maybe that was why. <laughs> I don't know, something about when you when a person complains about YouTube stuff and then kind of gets what they want immediately after almost, it's kind of like, dude, did you really need to uh, go on Instagram stories and complain about the algorithm knowing daggone well, you, like you were just gonna get the views anyway? I will say his views are down. Usually Shane with these videos gets about 10 to 15 million views. Um, I'm not seeing that for him anymore. If anything, maybe 3 million would be the highest he would get. Um, so for those people that think cancel culture or being canceled doesn't affect your channel, you're seeing it in real time. Just because it doesn't happen immediately doesn't mean it's not on the way. The karma always finds a way. Yeah, that's pretty much the end of part two. This, like I said, the video shouldn't be long at all, but I just kind of like wanted to point out a few things, talk about a few things here and there. If you watched the video, tell me what you thought about it down below. Um, but for me, I was just kind of like, I don't know. I was just kind of checked out. So that's the end of part two. And then let's just come back with my final thoughts. Hello, hi, welcome back. We are back with my final thoughts already. Um, sorry, this video is not an hour long, like uh, some of you were probably hoping for. I didn't think this video was gonna be an hour long because honestly, my final thought, this video was downright boring. <laughs> I heard about the Chuck E. Cheese thing and I wanted to check it out. Uh, that's pretty much one of the things that kind of drew me in. Um, just to see if he was gonna talk about the Chuck E. Cheese thing a little bit more. Um, but I did see a lot of like, we already knew this, um, why is this a video? This isn't a conspiracy. I definitely saw a lot of those comments, right? And um, I will say four months when you're like, I don't know what to do, you know, and then you're, you do something, you know, which 
is fine, but when you are still doing conspiracies for a podcast and stuff, and then you try to do something for your main channel based on conspiracy theories, it's like, well, what can you really bring up at that point? Um, who knows? Maybe Shane already talked about this in one of the podcasts and they expanded on it and he just made it a video uh, as a safe bet, which, you know, hey, um, more power to you. But like I said earlier, I think Shane is now in that, like he's in that era where he has to do a conspiracy video to keep the main audience that stuck with him after all this. But now when you're trying to expand and do different things, you gotta make sure you do it in a way where you keep your dedicated fans. Like there are subscribers that just watch you for one thing and will not watch you for anything else. Um, that's kind of like how it works for a lot of YouTubers right now. Um, like it's very hard to be a personality YouTuber. And when I say personality, um, I don't know if anybody watches them anymore, but the Merrill twins are definitely what, like, like they have that YouTube attitude. I can't explain it, but they do. Mr. Beast, um, he's kind of getting called out for stuff, but in a way, I don't think it's justified. Um, he's definitely someone that kind of like does all these uh, different things. Um, right now, he's definitely in his era where he's just make, making things aware. Um, PewDiePie before he retired? I don't know what he's doing um, per se, but um, PewDiePie was definitely another personality, like he could put, he could upload anything and people will watch um, kind of channel. Um, I don't think Shane Dawson is that anymore. He was a person that uploaded whatever he wanted to do and people watched. But at this point, it's just kind of like, from what I can tell, it's just like people only want one thing. And when they get that one thing, they'll watch it. Obviously, you can see it by the uh, video trending at the time of your recording. Um, but if you uploaded just like a regular video, I still think people would watch, but not as much as the conspiracy videos. Um, but that's how you kind of can tell who's like, who doesn't care what somebody uploads versus someone that really wants one thing or two things from a creator. Um, you can definitely tell with the uh, views. Um, my final thought with the video overall, I thought it was okay. I didn't think anything was like mind blowing or different. Um, I kind of already knew all this stuff, uh, especially the ghost kitchen thing because uh, I work in the food industry. I'm not gonna say where or what kind of uh, work because I don't want people to stalk me. Um, but I knew about the ghost kitchen thing because um, the restaurant I worked in is under two names and it's kind of like everybody kind of knows and nobody really like is bothered by it. Uh, the only thing we can't do is have our logo on the to-go bags, which again, for everyone that does a ghost kitchen um, or whatever, which is for those that didn't watch the video, uh, pretty much a ghost kitchen is a restaurant that has more than one name when you order something online, pretty much. Um, for instance, Denny's has like two different names. Um, when you look it up on like DoorDash or something, uh, the place I work at has two names. If you look up it on DoorDash, um, you just can't have your logo on it. Um, or they'll see it and then if they see it's under the different name, they won't put their logo on it, uh, things like that. Um, so it's not really anything new. I will say, I feel like it after the after the lockdown, it definitely spiked up because, you know, businesses definitely at that time definitely needed some more money. I don't know if it's like, I can't say it's true or not, but I will say it felt like the ghost kitchen thing spiked up after the lockdown. In the end for me, I just think this video was meh. Nothing really amazing, nothing really shocking, nothing really, it wasn't even a conspiracy video. It was just more so bringing up stuff that was like proven to be true. 
Um, the only thing that was like not true, of course, is the Chuck E. Cheese joke. Um, the whole pizza not fitting together thing, which I I don't know. I feel like once you got away from the lawsuit, I feel like, you know, you didn't, you didn't need to make a joke about it again because, again, people are just going to bring it up again. So I didn't think that was a smart move. Um, again, probably not going to get any repercussions for that. Um, but that was just like kind of my final thoughts on Shane Dawson's only conspiracy video of 2023 because he labeled it conspiracy videos of 20 uh conspiracy theory of 2023 so is this his only conspiracy video this year um we shall see once again it is malcolm that's me i hope you had a great time i hope you like shared and subscribed for all your homies and friends uh i'm very transparent um still trying to get in the groove uh it's been a week i think this is my fifth video uploaded this week so that's definitely more videos than I've uploaded all of last year. <laughs> so I definitely hope you enjoyed this. I hope the, we can have a civil conversation down below about this. Cause at the end of the day, Shane Dawson doesn't know me, bro. I don't know him. He don't know me. I made a commentary about his video and that was just pretty much what it was. Don't hate the guy, you know, congratulations to him around for getting married and all that stuff. Um, but I really felt like uh, this video was something to comment on because I did find it a little bit interesting and again 59 minutes about the same thing i don't know how you milk that out but he did <laughs> so once again it is malcolm that's me i i hope you like that end screen thing i've been doing with my hand i've been trying to like leave this video in different ways but if you don't like that i can do something else um this has been my sprite tropical mix i'm malcolm world of dance i don't know what else to say it's just you know hey i wish you well i wish you good health and I'll see you again next time.